So I've been running home labs for several years now, using all sorts of software projects to self-host stuff like Proxmox, Docker, Kubernetes, home lab dashboards and monitoring. You all know this from my videos. And I often love to use even smaller software projects like the Nginx Proxy Manager for instance, which I was using as a secure web proxy to protect some of my web services with HTTPS and trusted TLS certificates. Actually a nice project. But just recently something happened that made me question this decision and once I looked further into it I was shocked by how many problems this particular project has. <laughs> and that got me thinking well maybe small software projects like this aren't safe enough for self-hosting. Is that really true? Let's talk about that. It all started with a message by one of our community members on our Discord, pointing out the number of a common vulnerability and exposure CVE in Nginx Proxy Manager. Now this particular CVE describes an OS command injection, so whenever you're creating an access list, an authenticated attacker would be able to execute arbitrary commands to the operating system, which potentially could cause some damage, take over the system and yeah, many other bad things. And it's also made clear that this problem problem is not part of the Nginx software itself, but caused by a bad implementation of the Nginx proxy manager team. And first, I wasn't really too worried about that to be honest, because you know, CVEs are reported every day even on bigger software projects. It's just part of the game. What really worried me was once I looked up the history of this report and I found out this CVE was just the tip of the iceberg. But let's get into it. So now originally this issue was reported by Jamie Sloan who raised an issue on the Nginx proxy manager repository on GitHub on May the 21st in 2022. That was already the past year. And he is basically saying someone in his security community found a potential issue in Nginx proxy manager which he would like to report. However, the repository on GitHub was missing the security.md file which contains the information about how to contact the developers in such a case, so there was no information where to send this report to. And I guess not everybody here is familiar with the process of how security vulnerabilities are usually reported. It's very similar to what just happened here. When you find a security vulnerability somewhere in an application, you should contact the developers and make them aware of that. Just like, hey, I found this security issue in your software. These are my findings. Summarize it in a good report so that the developers can easily reproduce the problem. And at this point, usually nothing is being published yet to give the developers some time for the investigation and release a new version to fix that. However, this actually failed at the very first stage here because there hasn't been a way to report security issues to the developers. The reporter was polite enough to let them know, hey, I found something, please let me know how to report it. But apparently, since nothing happened after a year, which is a commonly used time frame for that, by the way, an advisory was published by the reporter and assigned as an official CVE. That's done because if the developers might not be willing to fix it or they don't react to your report, now everybody who is using this software can look it up and find mitigations for this issue to protect themselves against a potential attack. To be fair, this is not the worst case because the vulnerability hasn't been actively exploited, at least as far as we know. But since the actual findings are now publicly available, everyone can look it up and fairly easy build and exploit. So it suddenly became more urgent and that was also the time where the developers of Nginx Proxy Manager finally fixed it in a few weeks later. <laughs> By the way, if you want to look up the details of this CVE and what that means for you, I'll put the link for you in the description. But let me just be clear, I'm not blaming Nginx Proxy Manager or any of the developers that this has happened. It would be easy to dunk on that, but actually I think as this is still a small project that's primarily funded by donations, you have to admit that mistakes like this can happen and this report might just have been overlooked. However, what I see as a much bigger problem is why it probably was overlooked. Because this project currently has nearly a thousand open issues on GitHub, most of them are flagged as bugs and I haven't really seen any significant effort from anyone to fix them. The contributors or the people who are working on this 
project barely seem to keep up with all of the stuff that has been reported. I'm pretty sure they are working hard on this, but it's just too much for a small team. And this whole story leads me to another question. Nginx Proxy Manager might be just one problematic case that really stands out, but what about other small software projects and other tools out there? Are they fighting with the same problems? I have at least an assumption Nginx Proxy Manager is not the only one who is having issues like that. And that's why I thought we just need to talk more about the threats of self-hosting, especially when using smaller software projects. Because I know there are many people out there praising self-hosting and each and every small open source software project saying things like it's always better to self-host everything instead of using cloud services by the big and evil companies Google and Microsoft. But I believe this is wrong. And it's literally a dangerous mindset. Because just like we've seen, security vulnerabilities are a big problem in IT and especially small projects can struggle a lot with that. Security is just a complex field. With all the increasing modern cyber threats out there, developing software has become a lot harder in the past years. To really keep up with modern threats, you need to have highly skilled people who know how to build secure software. And I'm not really sure whether a small software project can all deal with that. Like we've seen it just recently in Nginx Proxy Manager here, someone reported a high severity CVE to the developers over a year ago and since then nothing happened until someone bumped it up by tagging the main developer. Just imagine you would really be affected by a more critical vulnerability in such a case that is actively exploited. Good luck with that. <laughs> no, you might argue that also happens in bigger software projects from time to time. Fair enough. Just because it's a bigger project that doesn't make it more secure. But there's one advantage you might have in bigger projects where there's a company or a huge developer stack behind them. You will have a much better coverage communication and mitigation of these vulnerabilities. Maybe the company is also part of a bug bounty program and they can fix a lot of these issues and critical CVEs even before they become public. Now that's of course usually not the case in smaller projects, especially when the developers aren't security experts. That's it about security, but it doesn't stop there, yeah? Also other bugs existing in smaller software projects are often not addressed, just like we've seen it in Nginx Proxy Manager, and I'm sorry to call it out again, but this is just such a good example of what can happen with a small project that suddenly blows up and if that happens too fast, nobody can really maintain all of the requests. And if you're affected by a bug now, you might never get a fix for it or just have to wait a pretty long time. Sure, this might also be a problem in bigger projects, like if you report an issue to, I don't know, Windows. Microsoft is not going to pay much attention to your particular problem, unless it is really huge and everyone has it. But the other way around is no more better in my opinion. Like if it is a really small project that's just developed by one or two persons, you never know how much they really care about fixing your bug. Or maybe they just decide to shut down the project and not maintain it anymore. There are so many outdated repositories on GitHub that people still use today without ever taking a look at when the repository was updated the last time. That's apart from security, one of the other biggest problems with smaller software projects, the lack of support and maintenance. So I for myself, I came to the conclusion that I usually avoid using such small software projects and tools in my home lab from now on because I just don't trust them enough. But I can also understand why you don't want to use bigger software projects in your home labs, especially by the big and evil companies. <laughs> so what should you do now? I think you need to find that sweet spot where a software project is big enough to ensure a good level of reliability, security and support, while it still remains outside of that enterprise field. Some good examples for that are Traffic, which replaced all of my Nginx Proxy Manager installations that apparently was a good decision. Teleport is another great example, which I'm using for remote access, or maybe Passport and Bitwarden as password managers. They are all open source software projects, so that's perfect for self-hosting and home labs, but they are all created by mid-sized companies, so they can provide you a certain level of reliability and support. Sure, that doesn't mean that they are all perfect, but I would absolutely trust these projects much more than any other small hobby project. 
Yeah, that's just how I see it. Okay, so one last thing we need to clarify. Does that now mean you should entirely avoid using small tools in your home lab? Well, I think it depends, yeah? If it's just a very simple application, like a home lab dashboard or maybe a bookmark manager, I wouldn't care much about these problems, yeah? As if something happens with this project, it wouldn't cause much damage to your environment. But with anything else that falls into this category of critical use cases, as I call it, yeah? We've just talked about password managers or secure web gateways or remote access tools like Zero Trust or VPN solutions. In this particular cases, I would never ever trust a small hobby project to be sufficient for these tasks. We just talked about the reasons why. So I, for myself, I'm done with Nginx Proxy Manager, I'm sorry to say it, but as always, don't just blindly trust any YouTubers telling you, hey, you should use this or that tool. Always do your own research, take a look at the project homepages, forums and git repositories and make your own decision which ones you want to use in your home lab. That's it for today. I know it's been a tough one, yeah, if you'd like to continue the discussion with me about this, join our Discord, feel free to send me a DM or just leave a comment here on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe and as always, I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.